So in this video, we're going to continue talking about the basics of a set. So we're going to spend a little more time talking about subsets here. So I want you to recall that if we have two sets, let's say set A and set B, set A is a subset of set B if and only if set B contains all elements of set A. So let's look at an example where that's the case. So we have our set A, which contains one element, and that element is the number one. We have our set B, which contains three elements, the numbers one, nine, and seven. So hopefully you can see that all the elements of set A are contained in set B. So by definition, we can say that A is a subset of B. And remember, I don't know how many of you watched the lesson where I explained the difference between using this symbol and using this symbol. But remember that this symbol is for a proper, a proper subset. And that's what you have in this case. If A is a subset of B and A is not equal to B, meaning A and B do not contain exactly the same elements, then it's a proper subset. So if I made a set here, let's say it's set, I don't know, Z. So Z equals seven comma nine comma one. If two sets are equal to each other, like we have in this case, we've got a one and a one, a nine and a nine, a seven and a seven, they're automatically subsets of each other because by simple definition, each set here contains all the elements of the other set. So when you have two equal sets, they're automatically subsets of each other, but they're not proper subsets. So here we'd have to say that Z is a subset of B using this symbol here. But recall that I can use this symbol whether it's a proper subset or they're equal. Okay, so just a little refresher in that. The main thing here is that you understand why A is a subset of B. Again, it's because B contains all elements of A. As another simple example, let's say we have this set Z. Z contains one element and that element is A. G, another set, contains three elements, A, B, and D. So again, we have a situation where Z is a subset of G. And if you wanted to, again, Z and G are not equal, so Z is a proper subset of G. You could write it using this symbol here if you want, but either would be correct. So now I wanna move into something that's a little bit more complex, and that's how to determine exactly how many subsets can be made from a given set. So to demonstrate this before we get into kind of our general formula, Let's suppose I have a set which contains the food in my lunch pail. And we're gonna let capital letter L denote this set. So capital letter L is gonna denote this set. And in my lunch pail, I have a turkey sandwich, an apple, and a soda. So those are the elements of that set. So the question here is, what if we asked, how many subsets of L can be made? So to think about this, think about what I could choose to take out of the lunchbox. So what could I choose to take out of the lunchbox? Let's copy this set down here, and we'll look at the choices. So set L, again, we have a turkey sandwich. So turkey sandwich. We have an apple, and we have a soda. So again, we're gonna think about what are the possible choices for us to take out of that lunch box. Now, I could just take out a turkey sandwich if I wanted to. Okay, so I could just have a turkey sandwich. So that is one subset. What else could I take? Well, I could just take an apple if I wanted to. So I'll just take an apple. And then I could also just take a soda. Just take a soda. So far, I know that I have at least three subsets, right? Because I have three subsets that contain exactly one element. But let's keep going. I have more choices. I could choose to take out a turkey sandwich and an apple. So turkey sandwich. And an apple. I could choose to take out a turkey sandwich and a soda.
And then I could also choose to take out an apple and a soda. Choose to take out an apple and a soda. So now I have three subsets with exactly two elements. What's left? What else could I take out? Well, I could take out everything, right? I could take out everything. So I could have a subset that's equal to the original set. And remember, if two sets are equal, they are automatically subsets of each other. So I could take out all of this, the turkey sandwich, the apple, and the soda. So most of you at this point would stop and say, okay, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven subsets, but that would be wrong. I can always choose to take nothing. Okay, so I have my lunch pail there and I can say, I don't want anything. I'm gonna choose nothing. So this symbol right here, recall, is the symbol for the null or empty set. By definition, for this reason, the empty set is a subset of every set. Okay, let me say that again. The empty set is a subset of every set. So again, I can choose to take nothing from the lunch pail. And that's the most confusing thing. That's kind of why I set this example up here because whenever I use an example with let's say numbers or kind of lowercase letters, people can't really visualize what's going on. When I use a lunch pail, everybody brings a lunch pail to work or has at some point and says, well, I can always choose to not take anything. So that's a subset. So we would have exactly one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight subsets that can be made from this set L. So in general, a set with N elements has two to the N subsets. Okay, two to the n subsets. So you recall that set L had what? Three elements, turkey sandwich, soda, and an apple, three elements. So two to the third power is eight. And that's what we found. We found that we had exactly eight subsets. What about this? How many subsets does set D have? Well, using our formula, set D has what? It has elements one, four, seven, and nine. It has four elements. So we would raise two to the fourth power because we take two and we raise it to the number of elements we have. Two to the fourth power is 16. Now, because this isn't too big, we can go through and list them just for fun. So let's kind of put this two to the fourth power equals 16. And let's see if we can prove or disprove this. So we know that we would have four subsets with exactly one element. We would have a set that contains just one, then four, then seven, then nine. Then when we talk about subsets that contain two elements, we would have what? We'd have one comma four, one comma seven, one comma nine, then we'd have four comma seven, and four comma nine, and finally we'd have what? Seven comma nine. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six subsets that contain exactly two elements. Then when we think about subsets that contain exactly three elements, what would we have? We'd start with one comma four comma seven. Then we'd have one comma four comma nine. Then we'd have one comma seven comma nine. And then we'd also have four comma seven comma nine. So we have exactly four subsets that contain three elements. Then we have a subset that is equal to this. I remember two sets are equal, they're subsets of each other. So one comma four comma seven comma nine. And then again, the null or empty set is defined as a subset of every set. So count this up. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And that's what we were told right there from that formula. So you don't need to go through and list this each time. Just follow the formula. I just want to show you that it works. Let's take a look at another one. So how many subsets does set T have? Set, set T contains what? The elements E, Q, N, W, and Y. It's got five elements exactly. So we would have two to the fifth power because it's two raised to the number of elements you have. Two to the fifth power is 32. So T has exactly 32 subsets. Let's take a look at this last one. We have this set G here. Set G has the elements 15, 12, 19, 2, 1, 7, 5, and 13. How many subsets can be made out of set G? 
Well, again, we follow our formula. 2 raised to the number of elements. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 2 to the 8th power is 256. So not a very difficult topic at all. If you get this type of question on a test, you're just going to follow your formula, right? 2 to the nth power, where n is the number of elements. Where a lot of students struggle with this is, conceptually, they don't get why the empty set is a subset of all sets. But again, when you think about it, when you have a given set, you can always choose to take nothing. 